The document opens with a recap of scenes from the fight at Lake Changjin, presenting the principal characters from that film and the prior activities. Subsequent to battling at Sinhung Ni, the Chinese Public's Worker Armed Force PVA's 7th Organization shows up at an area 12 kilometers from Hagaru Ri where it meets components of the 20th Corps and the gunnery contingent directed by Leader Yang. Getting ready to go after the runway and American 1st Marine Division supply base at Hagaru Ri. The PVA units drive caught American vehicles and utilize caught hardware. The film leaps to the ocean of Japan where Douglas A-1 Skyraiders send off from U.S. plane carrying warships to go after PVA units progressing on Hagaru Ri from nine bearings. The 7th H organization is then barraged by U.S. Naval Force Fort F-4U Corsairs, however they continue on toward an alternate objective incurring no setbacks. 7th organization leader Wu Chanli understands T. He planes expect to go after the Ordnance Brigade and pushes his men ahead. The scene then moves to the Ordnance Contingent section progressing in court U.S. trucks towing cannons pieces which is the end gone after by the Corsairs incurring greatest harm on the section, obliterating every one of the firearms. The 7th organization shows up on the scene, Yang lets Chanli know that all his court weapons have been obliterated. Chanli hands Yang a gun and advises the 7th organization to go catch more firearms 1.5 kilometers away. Yang then, at that point, mobilizes his men to likewise go catch more weapons. The scene then moves to the U.S. edge at Hagaru Ri which is blockaded by PVA powers. PVA troopers hurled themselves onto a security barrier so their friends can run over their backs to go after U.S. positions. PVA powers including the 7th Organization and the Mounted Guns Unit overwhelm the U.S. safeguards, killing a considerable lot of them. Pingy utilizes a bazooka to obliterate a U.S. automatic rifle position and the U.S. banner is blown out of sight. The Ordnance Regiment then turns the court cannons around to start shelling the Hagaru re-landing strip. Chan Li recovers H. His gun from Yang and afterward pushes his unit ahead to go after the runway. The PVA assaults Hagaru re 1st Marine Division Administrator Significant General Oliver P. Smith is educated at that. PVA are all over the place and coming in quick. The big guns contingent discharge a crawling flood in front of the 7th organization. The Americans empty their emergency clinic while Smith requests that the runway is kept open and he is placed in touch with Tokyo. The scene then moves to Tokyo where General Douglas MacArthur is going to a festival. MacArthur gets a call from Smith who exhorts H. Im that Hagaru re landing strip is the back line, that he needs troops to hang tight and demands fortifications to cover their withdrawal. MacArthur yells, Smith, this is war. Withdrawing is conspiracy, and orders Smith to stop his retreat. The scene gets back to Hagaru re where PVA mounted guns is currently raising a ruckus around town and the remainder of the base. A C 47 Skytrain is obliterated. By mounted guns discharge and Smith orders airplane to utilize the street, all things being equal. Smith orders support of the Suman extension and afterward arranges a retreat from Hagaru Ri. Yang is injured by U.S. Cannons shoot disfiguring his hand yet alone figures out how to load and discharge an ordnance piece obliterating an American weapon. The Americans retreat under gunnery discharge as the PVA infantry invade Hagaru Ri. The scene movements to the PVA 9th Corps base camp at Chungfang Dong. Melody Shillin is educated that the Marines are withdrawing and that the main course is across the Suman extension. Peng orders the 7th organization to separate from the battling at Hagaru Ri to hinder the U.S. retreat at Suman Extension. At Hagaru Ri the 7th organization is wiping up. Wu Wanli who was harmed in the assault gives his sweeping to a severely injured American in the clinic. The PVA troops rest and recover while the commandants meet and count their setbacks, Chan Li gets. The character labels of the 78 men who have been killed and afterward leaves a lit cigarette as a contribution in the snow. Chanli gets the request to progress to the Suman scaffold and obliterate it. Chanli's radio administrator brings up an obliterated U.S. helicopter and expresses that later on China will have their own better planes and Chanli answers that it is inevitable. Chanli orders the 7th organization to prepare to move out. The scene movements to the White House where President Harry S. Truman gets a wire from MacArthur mentioning utilization of nuclear bombs to win the conflict. A voiceover from a 30 November public interview has Truman trying not to say whether nuclear bombs would be utilized. The 7th organization progresses towards the Suman extension in snowstorm conditions that freeze their compass. 
The seventh organization shows up at the extension to find the ninth organization going after the US powers and they join the assault, saving the ninth organy. Zacian survivors however are compelled to pull out. The seventh and ninth organization officers tend their injured and eat frozen canned food, while Chanley counts the dead. US planes assault the region with negligible impact. A ninth organization officer describes their assault on the extension which caused slight harm. The US powers fix the extension and the guarded positions. The 7th uh, ND 9th organizations plan another assault. The 9th organization officer says that they should obliterate the extension and afterward passes on from a prior injury. US powers at the extension street. Opt their weapons while heavily clad fortifications continue toward the scaffold. The US commandant, a chief intends to draw the PVA onto the south finish of the scaffold and afterward obliterate them. Chanley briefs the two organizations on the arrangement to go after the scaffold from four unique bearings. Chanley advises Wanley to run free appearance that he has procured his trust. The organize it. Irons show respect for the sun looking north towards China and present May individuals Republic of China live forever prior to separating for the assault. The four gatherings send concealed in obscurity. A U.S. Sharpshooter shoots a PVA courier and thus is shot by a PVA marksman who likewise shoots out a searchlight on the north finish of the scaffold. Wanley tosses a projectile which explodes the U.S. Interchanges shelter beginning the assault. A U.S. lookout on the south finish of the scaffold is obliterated by a bazooka shot. The U.S. safeguards continue high alert, yet plan to trap the PVA assailants. PVA powers puncture a water pipe beneath the extension and afterward fire a bazooka up the line causing a blast at the siphon house behind the scaffold. Three PVA fighters run up the lee, any and assume control over the siphon house, setting off blasts that kill US warriors who show up to explore. More PVA fighters run up inside the line and more US troopers go into the siphon house, one of the US. Warriors tosses a projectile down the line and a PVA officer hops on it and retains the impact. One more bazooka round is started up the line killing more US fighters. A PVA fighter shoots out the lights in the siphon house and more Americans are killed then more PVA officers rise out of the line. North of the scaffold Chanley dispatches a performance assault, when the Americans attempt to fire him with a recoilless rifle they hit their base camp fortification. The Americans leave the HQ shelter subsequent to setting a destruction charges, Chanley stops more than 10 unarmed US troops. The destruction charge explodes and the Americans disperse while Chanley look through the shelter to attempt to catch the US commandant. PVA and US warriors battle for control of the sea. Fon house while PVA mortars obliterate the US ammo capacity regions. PVA powers overwhelm the US positions on the north finish of the extension, while on the south end they spring their snare on the PVA assailants. Wanley explodes an assault rifle position with a projectile. Yu Kongrong pushes him far removed of a sharpshooter who shoots Yu, clearly killing him. The US shielded segment moves toward the north finish of the extension and a tank fires on the PVA who answer with mortar fire and a difficult infantry assault. Wanli, having traveled through the US channels, attempts to projectile a US. Position however is come by the US commandant, they wrestle and the chief wins until Chanley shows up and puts a firearm to the commander's head, Wanli then, at that point, puts the prepper. Red projectile inside the skipper's coat and it detonates dispensing with him. The US protectors at the north finish of the scaffold fire on the PVA with flamethrowers, killing a few troopers one of whom continues to fire until he consumes to death. The PVA use mortars as bazookas and shoot a gas can making petroleum spread on the ground, when the flamethrowers fire again they touch off the petroleum killing numerous US troopers. The PVA troopers in the siphon house kill American fighters on the rooftop. Wanli and Chanley salvage Yu who was concussed. A US tanks progresses across the scaffold. The PVA troops at the south end attempt to obliterate it with a cord recoilless rifle. Chanley dispatches a performance assault on the US troops nearby the siphon house, handling a US warrior. Or on the rooftop and afterward falling inside. A PVA warrior runs from the siphon house towards the tank conveying a bag charge, he is over and over shot and the charge detonates breaking down him. I. Inside the siphon house ping he is gone after by a US officer who skewers him on a metal bar, yet Chanley then garrets the American however is snared in destruction. Ping he takes another bag charge and jumps under the tank. 
His arm is squashed and he is hauled under the tank. He advises Chanley to fire and he does so lighting the bag charge, obliterating the tank and puncturing the extension. The PVA units advance on the extension annihilating the last US positions, while Chanley is caught in the siphon house destruction. Recharged tank fire crumbles a PVA fighter as the vanguard of the 1st. Marine division moves toward the north finish of the extension and afterward continue to barrage the region. Chanley utilizes a sign whistle to arrange a retreat and the PVA pull out. Wanley attempts to save Chanley who advises him to leave, yet he and another fighter separate Chanley and they get away from down the line. The following morning some enduring 7th and 9th organization troopers rest in a valley close to the extension. U climbs a slope for a superior radio transmission when a trip of F-4 U Corsairs moves toward the valley. The Corsairs drops napalm which misses the mark as U has terminated on the planes causing them to notice him. The planes follow U dropping more napalm and he is set land and deteriorates in the fire. The planes return and barrage the valley pummeling a Fay. WPVA fighters and injuring numerous others, including Wanley. At the extension the marines fix the scaffold and their battling positions as they get ready to hold the scaffold for three days to permit their powers to withdraw across it. Beneath the extension more PVA survivors strip the obliterated US tank for provisions. The scene then ships to the ocean of Japan where a voiceover says that the 1st Marine Division is confronting a significant test. The scene then, at that point, movements to MacArthur in Tokyo who is educated regarding the harm to the Suman scaffold, MacArthur says that he told Smith not to withdraw. He is informed that his nuclear bomb plan caused discussion in the UN and he arranges the Suman extension be fixed. The PVA then, at that point, put a court USM-3 half-track once more into administration. While in a voiceover Chanley vows to go after the extension regardless of how frequently the US fixes it. The injured Mei Sheng is found in a flashback with his significant other where she advises him to return alive. Chan Li gives his authorities whistle to Wanli. Dusks and the US powers at the scaffold check the region. In a voiceover Chan Li orders Wanli to blow the whistle like clockwork from one or the flip side of the scaffold to occupy the safeguards. Chan Li encloses himself by a parachute and approaches the extension from the north. In the interim the US Officer orders that music is played over the extension amplifiers making the protectors unwind. The ninth organization then goes after the extension while over the scaffold may sets the fray. Ite in the half-track land and drives it down towards the scaffold as Chanley slides down the slope. Wanley attempts to enter the line however finds it blockaded with security fencing. The US protect. Oars fire on the half-track killing may however it detonates on the extension. Chanley slides over US positions and grounds on the siphon house rooftop. He slides off the rooftop and onto the extension where he is encircled by numerous US fighters who make no move since it would be seriously energizing. Chanley attempts to shoot an ordnance shell he was conveying, yet his gun fizzles, the Americans open discharge. Chanley is hit various times and tumbles off the extension yet figures out how to shoot the shell's wire causing a monstrous blast that punctures the scaffold. Wanley recuperates Chanley who passes on before him. Wanley reviews Chanley's guidance to him to run free. At first light Wanley is stuck to Chanley's body. The Americans watch the region around the extension, seeing Chanley's head they fire a flamethrower and his body is consumed on fire making his body and Wanley slide down the slope. The flamethrower administrator reports that there are no more PVA underneath the scaffold in the US. Administrator says now is the ideal time to return home. Wanley recovers awareness from the intensity of Chanley's consuming body. Wanley admires CUS helicopters flying in span ranges while a voiceover describes how US airplane flew in ranges to fix the scaffold. The US troops lay the extension ranges and vehicles start getting over the scaffold. Smith crosses the extension in. A jeep and sees a red scarf in a tree which he takes as a sign that the US doesn't have a lot of chance to pull out. Truman is shown looking meditative in the Oval Office. The scene then moves to the clearing of Hungham on the 24th of December where US powers portrayed as the 10th Armed Force plan to annihilate rail lines and supplies that can't be emptied. A US warrior is shown placing a jug of whiskey into the body pack of a dead trooper. Inscriptions express, the clash of the Suman scaffold was an ordinary entering assault into the profundities of the US Guard. It had critical significance in removing the adversary's retreat crashing the foe's resolve, and speeding up the course of the fight. 
This fight exhibited our military's dauntless soul in fight and the strong will of Chinese individuals to guard Chinese country's pride. Smith is shown offering his appreciation at an enormous burial ground sitting above Hungnam. The PVA are shown fast walking past the extension towards Hungnam. Wanli fires his carbine to draw their consideration and is perceived as being from the seventh organization. That Hungnam destruction charges detonate across the city as gloomy and injured Aimer. I can soldiers look on from ships as they sail away. The PVA, including Wanli, are shown victoriously running into the remains of Hungnam on the 25th of December, arriving at the ocean side where they wave warnings and cheer. Four jeeps containing PVA officials stop on a mountain ridge. Melody glances out over Lake Changjin, eliminates his cap and retires from official salute. Wanli takes a modest bunch of soil and envelops it by texture. In a back region PVA organization leaders report their misfortunes, among the mounted guns brigade just 107 out of 221 report for obligation, while Wanli reports that.